we have Clarice Avalos and Matthew Gibb, who are going to talk about integrating QA tools into our most popular editors, ID Editor and Jossel. Thanks, everyone. Um, so if you're just here for Pierre's talk, um, this is going to be like a perfect sequel, uh, we think, um, for what you just spoke about. So um, thank you for being here. Uh, this is Clarice Ablos. I'm Matt Gibb. Uh, we both work at Maxar, and we're based out of Washington, D.C. And today we're excited to talk to you about some of the work we've been doing uh, integrating validation and quality assurance checks uh, into the different map editors. So there's a few different problems we face. Uh, first is the amount of issues uh, in the OSM database. Uh, there's many topological and attribution issues just waiting to be fixed. Um, second is that OSM, as OSM grows uh, to, with huge numbers of new mappers, um, there doesn't seem to be as many people willing to fix and validate others' contributions. Um, so this, this is both a good and a bad problem because it means the OSM community is growing, um, but it also means there are still issues that need to be fixed. Um, so the third is more of a responsibility for us as the OSM community. Um, it, it, we, we can't criticize new mappers too much uh, if they don't have all the resources in front of them to make the best decisions. So the validation and quality control tools that are available in the OSM ecosystem are, are wonderful. Um, and there's also a lot of them. Uh, but with so many great tools, it can kind of be tough to keep track of everything. Uh, some are for very specific reasons, while others are more comprehensive. Uh, however, not all of the tools are front, right front and center in front of the eyes of all contributors. Um, tools like Osmos and, and KeepRight are pretty ubiqu ubiquitous, uh, and, and many people have, have heard of them. Uh, but we should be able to take these community accepted validation checks and put them right in front of the user to catch the issues before they enter the database. Um, there may also be a delay from when a contributor, contributor creates data, uh, before someone else is able to catch the, the potential error. For instance, if someone is mapping as part of a, a project in the tasking manager and they incorrectly uh, connect a residential road to, say, a trunk road, uh, the editing tool you might be using might not flag that as an issue. But that's a, that's a validation check in Osmos. Um, so so it, it would be difficult for the new user to identify the right place in the wiki or a different training resource um, to fully understand the tagging schema and, and correct workflows for mapping. So this leads to sort of how we're looking at validation in OSM. And our team's approach uh, has been to stop bad or incomplete data uh, from being created or uploaded in the first place. Um, this can help give immediate feedback to new mappers uh, and give them the confidence they might need to, uh, to have to ensure that they're contributing quality data. So I'll give you a second to read. Dilbert is wonderful. In order to bring more validation to users in the editors, we have added to the validation rules in Jossum and ID, and um, we'll show you how you can build upon the existing fr validation frameworks as well. Um, we've also provided an easy way to create guided custom presets and validation rules with an application called Map Rules. Uh, finally, we wrote validation-centric overpass queries to only pull in data that has issues. So Jossum's data validator allows you to validate your current data set as you are editing and also warns you before you upload the data if there are any issues that may need to be fixed. There are two types of data validators in Jossum, which you can, you can find and enable in the preferences window. Tag checker rules written in map CSS, which are great for basic topology and tag checks. Then tests written in Java to handle more complex geometry checks. So what is map CSS? It's a CSS-like language for map style sheets that allow you to specify how a given feature should be displayed. As in the picture on the left, uh, you could have a selector for water features and specify them to be displayed in blue. It's used in Jossum for map styling and highlighting data validation issues. Uh, so to the right, you'll see we created a map CSS style that would show buildings that have the same name in the same color. This helped us to identify potential relations that need to be made around buildings with the same name. Here are the basics for creating a map CSS validation check. In the selector, you would specify the geometry of the feature you're looking for, so node, way, relation, or star for all geometries. Then attributes to look for, so in this case, features with the amenity equals hospital tag that don't have a name tag. 
Then in the body, you would write instructions for what to do with the feature. So you could throw a warning in the JOSM validator window that says hospital without a name tag. When validation is run, if you have any features that match your rule criteria, the warning will show in the validation results window. You could create your own map CSS checks and save them as a .map CSS file, or more specifically, .validator.map CSS file. Then go to your JOSM preferences and add them as an active rule, and they would immediately become incorporated into your local JOSM validation checks. We've taken a look at the common issues detected by the QA tools that Matt mentioned earlier and started creating map CSS checks based on them so that we can find those issues in JOSM. Uh, here's a more exam advanced example um, inspired by a keep right check that uses variables and pseudo classes um, like node, node connection uh, to find junctions where motorways are connected directly to a highway and might be missing something, like a motorway link or a motorway junction. You'll find these rules inspired by Osmo's keep right and OSM lint available in your tag checker rules, and we'll just need to make them active in your preferences to use them. They are maintained on the JOSM wiki rules page, where you too can add rules you'd like to share and help add to or improve the ones already out there. We've really appreciated getting feedback, especially when it comes to refining checks to reduce false positives. The great thing is, if you can create map CSS rules, you'll also be able to create Osmos analyzers from them to also give you that large scale overview of issues. So I encourage you to check out Frederic's talk tomorrow at 9.30 about how we can share rules across applications and Vincent's talk about maintaining and developing Jocelyn. Um, so like Clarice mentioned, uh, there's two different types of validators in Jocelyn. Uh, the map CSS ones, uh, which she just explained, and the tests, which are uh, a bit more advanced and, and written in Java. Um, so where map CSS is limited mainly to shared nodes and different attribution uh, checks, uh, the Java tests allow for a bit more advanced analysis uh, and geographic validation, looking at distances and some of the relations between data. Um, so here's an example uh, similar to Osmos's uh, far from water uh, analyzer, which uses a, a list of identified water-related man-made features um, being flagged at a specified threshold uh, from a natural water feature. So you can see in the GIF uh, that once the man-made equals peer is moved inside the 30 meter threshold, um, it's no longer flagged for validation. Um, that, and that 30 meters is, is somewhat arbitrary, um, but with the check you'd be able to, to change that threshold based on, on your own criteria. Here's another example looking at waterways uh, needing to start and end inside a uh, water body. And if it does intersect, it needs to go all the way the length of the, the water body. Again, all sorts of data relationships are able to be identified here uh, where map CSS wasn't able to flag because they didn't actually share a node. The, the way went over uh, the, the other closed way in the water body. And uh, again, inspired by uh, the Osmos Analyzer of, of Waterway, looking at a number of different uh, Waterway uh, validations. And just one more third example, looking at route relations for public transport related features. Um, not going to spend too long here, but just to give you another example using a non-natural uh, feature. So what have we done? Uh, we've added 58 new validators to JOSM, uh, all using map CSS. Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so if JOSM already had a somewhat similar check to Osmos or a different validation tool, uh, we didn't add it. Uh, we just wanted to help create a more comprehens comprehensive uh, collection of validation tools uh, available directly to the mappers as they're mapping. Uh, 41 of our checks have been inspired by Osmos, uh, seven from KeepRight, OSM Lint has a few, and then even one from Atlas, um, which mainly looks at highway-related issues and lives in the OSM, uh, OSM Lab GitHub repo. So, like I just sort of mentioned, most of the, the, the checks that we've looked at are related to highway issues, which sort of makes sense uh, given how many groups rely on OpenStreetMap data for routing and navigation. Uh, as well, uh, and then there's also general tagging uh, attribution issues. Um, but that's not to mention that there may be very specific one-off checks like, you know, the tree mapping that you want to validate. Um, and that's okay, because if you have a, a very niche uh, area of mapping, you too can create your validation checks and share them with others 
uh, so that way everyone can benefit from how um, you know your expertise in a certain area of mapping, uh, how that can be mapped with other people and and sharing how things should be mapped. Um, so I do want to apologize for this. Um, since this is not a data visualization conference, um, I really took that to heart. Um, this is, I think, the default Google um, bar chart. <laughs> um, but it, it's just another way to show what I, what I just said. Um, we've converted uh, map CSS checks mainly in, in tagging highways and, and general tagging uh, related issues. Um, but again, just again to show that there's plenty of space for improvement in all these other areas uh, for anyone else who wants to contribute their own validation checks. All those validations are great for identifying issues which the general public agree upon. Uh, but we've seen it time and time again where people request new presets or invalidations or changes to existing ones for their specific needs oftentimes turning into a debate about whether or not it should be included, um, since there are use cases in certain parts of the world where it is, in fact, valid. So we made an application called Map Rules that can be incorporated into the tasking manager to create campaign-specific attribution guidelines which generate custom presets and validation rules that can tailor the editors to your campaign or organization-specific needs. This sort of end-to-end -end communication helps enforce the requirements for mapping features in a simplified, standardized, and streamlined way. Here you'll see the simple UI we created to specify what types of features you'd like the mappers in your campaign to focus on um, while mapping and how it should be done. This can be a standalone app or integrated in a task manager or another app with an iframe. So let's say you wanted them to map hospitals, which should all have the building equals hospital tag on them and be drawn as an area or a point. And all the features with those identifying tags must have a name and may have an indication of whether or not they handle emergencies. All of the drop downs are populated with the assistance of tag info, popular combinations to help the campaign manager find the most common associated tags. This then turns into a clean list of guidelines for mappers to see what is required of features they add in your campaign. And it also generates a config file that you can use in the apps. So here, when they choose to edit an ID editor from a map rules campaign, the list of presets will be limited to the features indicated in the map rule that can be applied to the geometry drawn. This helps guide your users by reducing the otherwise large number of presets and ID to sift through and helps mappers focus on the types of features relevant to the campaign. In the Jossum plugin, there's a drop down of presets associated with a campaign in the toolbar. When a preset is selected, it automatically adds the identifying tags from the map rule. Here, a sports field gets the leisure equals pitch tag, and it only shows the fields and values relevant to the campaign. So you'll see the suggestions from the map rule for the sport field. Its uh, value may be soccer or American football. Guided presets make it easier for mappers to know what to fill in when creating data. It will also throw validation errors or suggestions for further information while editing. In Jossum, these would show in the validation window. Um, here you can see they forgot to add a name and might want to add a sport that the field is used for. We do have a GitHub repo if you're interested. Um, my colleague Max Grossman has recently implemented user authentication, which will allow us to implement the concept of user presets. So you can have your favorite presets at the ready and also share and reuse existing presets. As you may know, um, Task Manager is undergoing a redesign, so we'll be working on integrating map roles into Task Manager 4 when it's ready. Um, since our initial develop it, development efforts began when we were still working with Task Manager 2. Um, the last thing we wanted to touch on are validation-based overpass queries. A couple reasons why this becomes important is because, as we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of error-detecting QA tools, each with their own databases of issues that may not get updated very frequently because it takes a decent amount of time to run all those validations on the entire world. Not to mention, issues may have been fixed through various applications and never marked as resolved in one QA tool or another. So if you can query the data with issues yourself, you'll only be looking at the outstanding issues. Um, and Overpass is a powerful way to query OpenStreetMap data that's updated every minute. Also, when in expert mode in Jossum, you can download data uh, with a validation targeted Overpass query and be able to pull data with issues over a larger area without hitting the data limit you would normally get if downloading all the data in the bounding box. It also enables you to perform bulk operations to fix multiple issues at once, like deleting orphan nodes. You can also create map roulette challenges 
with these queries to direct mappers to review one issue at a time over large areas. Challenges can be created with GeoJSON, so you could export issues from Osmos into MapRoulette or use an overpass query, which can be rerun to update challenge tasks at a later time. In the interest of sharing these queries and uh, reducing redundancy, we added an OSM wiki page that maps the query to references to the QA tools they are based off of. That way, you can easily find more documentation with examples and possibly ways to fix them. Speaking of redundancy, as I was finding a place to put these queries, I found some more wiki pages that also share quality assurance overpass queries. And so at least I know that we're not alone trying to fulfill this need. Um, and it's just really interesting to see you know, what else is out there. So now that you can pull a bunch of data with quality assurance issues directly in Adrosum, how do you go about fixing them? You can zoom to each feature in the validation results to investigate the issue, and some validations may have automatic fixes that can be applied. In the map CSS, if it finds a deprecated tag, amenity equals hotel, that should be changed to tourism equals hotel, you could use fix remove and fix add to automatically update the features tag when fix in the validation window is clicked. The Java checks can also have commands associated with them that will run actions in Jossum on fix. Uh, there may be edge cases that aren't accounted for in the suggested fix, so proceed with caution and make sure to inspect the feature and review, and review what changes are made to each feature. Uh, but adding more automatic fixes will make it easier for people to get through all of these validation issues more quickly. So why does all of this matter? Uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, we have a responsibility to new mappers to give them all the tools necessary to create quality data. Um, by creating custom validations, individual users and teams or groups can have the directed focus that they need. Uh, for example, if you're interested in mapping railways, uh, why not sharing your validation written in map CSS so you can identify where there should be a railway equals switch, right, where two railways intersect and a train can uh, go a different direction. Um, there's a lot of them that aren't mapped. Um, so thematic validations uh, could also uh, assist with directed or organized editing and cleanup. Um, so if there are standardized and shared validation che checks, everyone can benefit. So our challenge to everyone in this room or watching online is uh, to create maps, map CSS uh, validation rules add them to the JOSM validator, uh, and create, start playing with map rules and, and creating map rules that, that can be shared. Thank you. My name is Clarissa Matthew. Um, let's see what questions we have. Please raise your hand. Nice and high. All right, let's start here. Hello, I'm Vincent from JOSAM. So thank you so much for presenting the capabilities of MapCSS validation in JOSAM and what you are doing and how you help us in the last year to improve the, the rules we provide. And thank you too for using the new JOSAM logo, which we <laughs> changed it uh, very <laughs> uh, not, so, not, so, not so long ago. Uh, my question is uh, for the um, for the next uh, evolution uh, we could provide together. Um, as you may know, JOSAM and Osmos are uh, done by European people, so we, we don't always have a global vision of the OSM problem in the whole world. So do you plan to focus on this subject? I'm thinking especially about problem only specific to an area, for example, problem only applicable to the United States or other parts of the world. Right. So I know that I think for the map CSS checks, you can specify like localization, right? Yeah. yeah. That would be a, probably a good next step, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot we could add to, um, you know, creating the, the map rules at least. Like, you know, we have big dreams to do relations and all that too, like, one step at a time. <laughs> So just as a confirmation, you mentioned that 
the ID will be integrated into the next task manager version and you, I mean project managers will be able to add their own presets to the project, is That's that correct? The, yeah. Um, so literally uh, what you do is you create the map rules, you could either do it in the standalone app or we're trying to integrate that into task manager so you could do it in there. Um, and then it's, it's just the config ID that for, you know, that points to that map rule and that just gets saved in task manager and so they'll see those instructions that you saw um, for the mappers and then, you know, the, the campaign manager would be able to edit them and um, when, you, when you launch it from that task manager campaign, you say edit in Jossum or edit in ID, uh, those get loaded into uh, a version of ID. Um, and that, that's something like, uh, I guess not everybody wants their presets to be limited. We've heard that, you know, if they're an advanced mapper, they, don't, they might want more options. Um, so I guess configuring, you know, you can make an option like I, I want to open it up more uh, and get the regular ID too. And, and Clarice also mentioned uh, earlier on about uh, how we just implemented uh, OAuth. Um, so that, while that will let a user save um, their presets, um, it'll also start to pave the way for being able to have sort of like template presets uh, that are available for, you know, if, if we're doing a, a mapping campaign for, you know, all the hospitals, you know, but we're gonna do it here, 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 and over here, um, you don't have to recreate it at the end every time. Um, so that's definitely in our roadmap. Uh, well, I, I have a question. So, um, is there a way to ignore presets or um, suggestions in a s particular area? So, for example, I know that there was discussion how in New York City the building footprints were imported from New York's um, official um, map, uh, like uh, city records, and none of the buildings in New York are actually exactly square. Right, so it's sort of like you know turning off presets for a specific area, um, or you know I was looking at the example and I was thinking you know I have no idea what the sports field near my house is named. I don't think it has a name. Um, so so in Jossum and even ID as well, um, you can toggle uh, different uh, validation errors. Um, that that's going to be on the editor side because uh, if you're using a defined preset for um, you know, part of a map rules campaign or something, um, those are going to be very, very focused. And I, I think we're, we're gonna get an answer. <laughs> Actually, I can uh, provide uh, additional details. So the answer is yes. Uh, in map CSS, uh, you can define uh, particular countries or for United States, Canada, and India, you can also provide states code. So you can say, that a rule is only applicable for a specific country or everywhere except in a particular country. Uh, we have uh, validation rules uh, currently defined in JOSAM, JOSAM itself about um, the spelling of the double S in German language, which is not the same between Germany and Austria for the word Strasse. Sorry for the pronunciation. It's not written the same. So. The, the check is not the same between Germany and Austria. So you could do the same for uh, US states, for example. There's probably another solution in JOSM. You have the fine function where you can either see or not see. So you could say not see buildings or certain characters. <coughs> So there, there's definitely a lot of functionality that we've learned along the way, and clearly there's a lot that we don't know, um, which is great, and that's why we're here, because we want um, people to talk. Um, we, we don't have a, a birds of a feather plan, but uh, we're here through the end of the conference, so we'd, we'd love to tag up and chat with people who, who are interested. I have a follow-up question on, on map rules. Um, you saw, um, you, you mentioned that there is um, the integration with JOSM as well. So does that work with uh, the open in JOSM link to populate presets and stuff like that? Already, uh, now, or? So, okay, here's the caveat, I guess. We <laughs> haven't deployed map rules yet. Um, you could spin it up yourself. Um, but yeah, we, we haven't put it on a, on a server or anything, but yeah, you, you could download the plugin and it would, just, it would just add an extra 
you know, preset drop down essentially at the top. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. thanks everyone.